Hi everyone, my name is Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. So I wanted to film this a few days ago and put it up so that it would be up like in advance of the release of Oathbringer, but that didn't happen. So hopefully you'll be seeing this like on the day that Oathbringer is released or shortly after. At the time of filming, it's the day before Oathbringer is being released and I am so pumped and excited. So I just kind of wanted to chat with you guys about the things that I love about the Stormlight Archive, where I think it's going, and then some questions that I have for the upcoming book. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and point out that my channel name has changed, you might have noticed. I just took out the portion of it that was my actual name. My transitioning period from purely commenter to content creator is over. And now I'm just read and find out, and not Shelby Mackhart read and find out. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and warn you if you have not read the first two books of the Stormlight Archive, then you are gonna want to leave because, yeah, this video is gonna be chock full of spoilers for The Way of Kings and Words of Radiance because this video is gonna be about the direction that I think the Stormlight Archive is going in and the questions that I have. So my thoughts might not seem super coherent when. I'm doing this video because when I was trying to plan it, I was just all over the place with all of my ideas and stuff like that. So I think I'm gonna start with the things that I love and I'm interested in and how I predict they're gonna play out. So I'm gonna start with the actual structure of the book. So we know that The Way of Kings follows Kaladin's backstory, and we know now that Kaladin is a Windrunner. We know that Words of Radiance follows Shallan's backstory, and that she is a Lightweaver. And then Oathbringer is going to be following Dalinar's backstory, and he is a Bondsmith. We also know that there are going to be 10 books that are published in the Stormlight Archive, and I am speculating that each of the 10 books will follow a different character's backstory as it has been doing for the first three, and that it will represent a different knight of each order. And we have candidates for the different orders of the Knights Radiant. We've already followed the Windrunner, which is Kaladin, and we've followed the Lightweaver, Shallan, and we're going to follow the Bondsmith, Dalinar. At the moment, we don't have any confirmed Dustbringer characters, and I don't have any predictions on that quite yet. We know that Lyft is an edge dancer, so I'm betting she's going to be pretty major in later books. Renarin is confirmed as a truth watcher. Zeth is a skybreaker. Yasna is an else caller. And we don't have any confirmed will shapers or stone wards yet, but I have a prediction about a potential will shaper. And I think that our potential will shaper is Eshenai. Yes, Eshenai the Parshindi, the Voidbringers. I totally think that she's going to be a Knight's Radiant because I've heard Sanderson say that he can't confirm or deny whether or not Parshendi and Parshman have the potential ability to surge bind. Also, following the structure of the first two books and following the cover choices of the first three books. So, in The Way of Kings, on the cover we have who I believe is probably Eshenai. You might not think that, but I'm pretty sure that this actually is aligned with the description of her in Words of Radiance. And then, in the interludes in Words of Radiance, Eshenai is kind of the focus, consistent character that we're always following up with in the interludes. So I think that makes her significant and that she is probably going to be a Knight's Radiant. Also, on the back of Words of Radiance, the character who is Eshenai is referred to as the Explorer. And the Will Shapers are supposed to be resolute builders who are essentially adventurers. So that lines up with the description of the explorer. There's also the fact that in the interludes of the Way of Kings, Zeth is the focus, and then it is confirmed at the end of Words of Radiance that Zeth is a skybreaker. Then we consider the covers of Words of Radiance and Oathbringer. Words of Radiance has Kaladin on the cover, and Oathbringer has Yasna on the cover, and, and they are both confirmed Knights Radiant. So I just think that this means Eshenai is gonna be a will shaper. <laughs> Then there are a couple other things that I want to throw out there about the Orders of the Knights Radiant, one of them being that I've developed a system based on via character strengths on how I think you could kind of compare and determine Knights Radiant Orders in real life, because I think that the divine characteristics align with specific character strengths that we know of and are confirmed across cultures in our world. I'm actually thinking about sending Sanderson a message to see if he would look at my system and see what he thinks of it. Maybe I'll share that with you guys sometime. But there are a few things about other potential radiants that I want to mention and some details about the Knight's Radiant that I want to consider as well. So I know that I mentioned already that Eshenai is one that I speculate will end up being one of the Knight's Radiant. But what about Lopin? Because
because Lopin inhales Stormlight in some capacity at the end of Words of Radiance. So what is he? Is he like a developing Knight's Radiant or what? I originally was thinking that he must be either a Windrunner or a Bondsmith because I thought I remembered that he stuck somebody or was going to stick something, but apparently he just like said that. And I don't have the book to reference and see what actually went down because I actually lent it out to a friend because I want everybody to read the Stormlight Archive. <laughs> then there are a couple of things about the actual Knight's Radiant that I think are interesting, such as the Shard Blades. We know at this point that shard blades are spren, but the ones that everybody who's not a Knight's Radiant have are like dead spren, which is really disturbing. <laughs> but I noticed when reading these books that the shard blades, when being used, you know, as an actual, like the spren that they have the Nahal bond with, the shard blades actually glow the color that is aligned with their specific order of the Knight's Radiant. So that's something that I expect to continue to see. For example, Kaladin's is blue and Shallan's is like reddish pinkish, which aligns with Sapphire and Garnet. I'm really curious about how shard blades are going to work out for Dalinar, since he is bonded, sort of, to the Stormfather. So is he ever going to be able to use like a legitimate shard blade? I don't know. Also, what is shard plate? Because I I don't really know. Like, is it similar? Is it kind of? I just have no idea. So I'm hoping we get that answered in this book. Then there's also the shards, or whatever they're called, in Roshar, the Rosharn part of the Cosmere. So there's Honor, and there's Cultivation, and there's Odin. And I'm pretty sure that the Orders of the Knights Radiant are aligned with either Honor or Cultivation, and I'm curious about how that's gonna go throughout the rest of the books. So for example, the Windrunners are aligned with Honor. I'm pretty sure that's like explicitly stated in these books. But then I'm curious about the Truth Watchers, because that seems like it could be something more of Cultivation, but then again, we don't know a ton about Cultivation at this point. Also, speaking of Truth Watchers and Cultivation, what do Truth Watchers even actually do? We know that they have some sort of light weaving ability, but they're supposed to also have some sort of regeneration, like a healing sort of ability to heal others. But then Renarin is talking about seeing things and seeing the future in the end of Words of Radiance. So is that part of their ability, or is that just something weird with Renarin? So since I went ahead and started talking about Renarin, I'm just going to talk about characters and predictions that I have about specific characters. So when Kaladin goes back to his village to try to rescue his parents and everything, I speculate that something is going to come up about the girl that he had a crush on when he was little who then married the mayor or something like that. And then I'm also hoping we might hear a little bit about whatever Kaladin's backstory is with some woman named Tara who's referenced multiple times in the first two books, but we don't know anything about her. Then with Shallan, I'm just like not sure how she's gonna manage this whole shady dual identity thing. I don't like that, honestly. That's one of my biggest issues with Shallan's character is that I get that she's kind of supposed to be this, not morally gray exactly, but this character who is okay with lying and deception, and I think that works well with light weaving, but it's something I feel really weird about. And then because this is Oathbringer, we will be getting Dalinar's backstory, and I am really, really, really hoping that we find out why the heck he has all these big gaps in his memory. Like, we know that it's something to do with how Dalinar went to the Night Watcher and then some of his memories were taken away, but like, what was he going there for? And why were the memories taken? And why specifically about his wife? And I'm sure these are questions we're gonna have answered, but I just need to know. Because I feel like I really like Dalinar's character right now, but I don't know if I'm gonna like the past Dalinar because it sounds like he was not my kind of person before and that he's become the kind of character that I like recently. And then, kind of getting into a few more specifics, what is Yasna doing on the cover of Oathbringer? Because it's obviously Yasna. What's going on there? Also, is Lyft gonna be making an appearance in this book? Because she had an entire short story dedicated to her, and now I'm just really curious about what's gonna happen with her as a character. And then Hoyd. Hoyd being Wit. Are we going to find out more about Hoyd in this book? I know that I haven't read Warbreaker or White Sand. Those are the only two Cosmere things that I haven't read. So am I gonna like know more about him and his whole world hopping thing at this point? How is that gonna play out because he has been involved in the ends of both of these books. Is that gonna be a theme? Is Hoyd slash Wit 
going to be kind of like the end scene for all of our, these books. That would be interesting if we got to the end and he was the last scene because I feel like he is gonna be all wrapped up in everything that's happening. Speaking of all wrapped up in everything that's happening, there's Teravangian. What? When I was reading his part in Words of Radiance, at first I thought he was great. Like, I liked him a lot. I was like, oh, the sweet old guy cares about learning and culture and stuff. He's freaking brutal. Like, how is that gonna play out in the rest of these books? Am I gonna kind of end up liking him despite the terrible things that he's doing? Or am I going to decide that he's a complete monster? Because at the moment I'm feeling like he's a complete monster, but I also started out feeling like he was a sweet old man. Speaking of people that I'm trying to decide if I think they're a monster or a nice person, there's Adolin, who I do not think is a monster, but he kills Sadius at the end of Words of Radiance in cold blood. Like, he just freaking kills him. And I know that Sadius was threatening his family, but it was like more vague kind of threats. It wasn't like he had a family member right there and was like about to kill them. And Adolin killed him. Who the heck is gonna realize that Adolin is the one that killed Sadius? Because I know they're probably like just gonna find Sadius' dead body or whatever and assume something bad happened to him because they're in Irithiru and who knows what goes down there, but like somebody's gonna have to realize that Adolin killed him. Like, that's gonna have to happen somehow. And then I'm kind of worried, like, what is Sanderson gonna do with this? Is he gonna turn Adolin into, like, an anti-hero? I doubt it, but I think he has potential at this point in the books. But then again, I think that this kind of makes Adolin and Shallan kind of deserve each other because they both do things that I consider shady. And I really hope that this does not become a love triangle with Adolin and Shallan and Kaladin. Because I think Shallan and Adolin are cute on their own and I'm just really tired of seeing love triangles. An example of why I ship Shallan and Adolin is them talking about poop in Shard Plate in Words of Radiance. When that happened, I was just like, okay, I ship it. They're talking about defecating. <laughs> And since this has been really rambly, I'll try to just like wrap it up briefly by mentioning that because I like understanding systems and magic systems, and I've obviously been putting a lot of thought into the Orders of the Knights Radiant, I'm dying to know what kind of spren are associated with each Order of the Knights Radiant. <laughs> like so far we know about Honor Spren, and we know about the Cryptics, which are essentially like Lie Spren, and then we know about the Storm Father, but like... What do the bondsmiths typically bond to? Do they all bond to the Stormfather? Like, how does that work? How does the Neho bond even work? I know that it somehow involves broken people who have some sort of crack in their, like, spiritual DNA within the Cosmere, sort of, and that is able to be filled with the Neho bond. But how? I also know that Spren and, like, kinds of Spren select who they want or who's gonna be a good fit based on, I'm assuming, the divine characteristics. So obviously Honor Spren would look for protecting leading people, Windrunners. Cryptics would be bonding to creative, honest people, Lightweavers. What kind of Spren are wanting to bond to the Truth Watchers, like the learned giving? And yes, I'm using Truth Watchers as an example because based on my own system, I think I am a Truth Watcher. <laughs> also, we know that Windrunners are of honor, sort of, or something. And I speculate Truth Watchers are of cultivation, so what if they are like cultivation spren or something? I don't know, I just need these answers so that I can fill in the gaps of my magic system knowledge for surge binding and stormlight consumption and all of that stuff. I like to understand things. But anyway, that is gonna be it for this video. I know this has been long and rambly, but I have so many thoughts and I'm so excited for Oathbringer coming out tomorrow, so at the time that you're probably watching this, I'm currently reading it. I'd be willing to bet. Comment down below and let me know what some of your predictions are about the future of the Stormlight Archive. Also, if you have happened to start Oathbringer, no spoilers for Oathbringer in the comments, please. This is Way of Kings and Words of Radiance spoilers only. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching, I hope you have a good day, and until next time.